wonder hussy here. I just went to a place I never thought I would go in a million years. The Zach Baggins Haunted Museum. If you've never heard of him, Zach Baggins is this ghost hunter bro who has his own TV show. I call him Douche Baggins, but don't tell anyone. Anyway, he opened this museum. It's actually right down the street from my house, less than a mile from my house, that supposedly has all this haunted stuff in it. And Well, I like creepy stuff as much as the next person, but I'm pretty skeptical about paranormal stuff. So it took an invitation from Eric from Wild Card Journeys. We've been friends um, on YouTube for a long time. When you were at 5,000 subscribers, that's when I subscribed. Yeah, and he has his own channel and he's actually given me a lot of helpful advice on how to grow my channel. So I gotta thank you for that. Oh, please. You're, you're awesome. You're my heroine. Well, thank you, I Eric. Mean, hero, or, I don't do heroin, but I'm sorry. But if you did do heroin, you would do me. Yeah. Wait a minute. Anyways. I would name it after you. Okay, great. All right. You invited me to this museum. Yes. What was in it for you? Well, okay, I, one, I got to meet Wonder Hussy, okay? I got to watch, see all your videos, all your adventures. That part, that one where you climbed on the side of a mountain underneath a plane that was about to oh, slide yeah. off, that one made me nervous. That's like my favorite of your videos. Oh, okay, okay so good. I'm hardcore, okay? I'm not just a giant Feedback. Okay, I love that video. You went up there with your sister, right? That's right, I did. See? The Albatross, <laughs> link above. <laughs> See, I watch your videos. So basically, um, my channel is called Wildcard Journeys. And what it is, is I hit the road for to make videos about the paranormal, various urban legends, or just whatever might be out there. It's about travel, and it's about all the things I wanted to check out as a little kid, but my parents wouldn't stop so we could go check it out. So really, I blame my parents for that. And um, I just love everything about the paranormal, ghosts, cryptids, UFOs. I, I approach everything with a grain of salt. You know, I believe in the in each story on a case by case basis. I'm not going to believe every UFO story or every ghost story. It's just how credible is the witness and those like. So far this year, I've been to Salem, I've been to New Orleans, I've been to Baton Rouge. I was in Catalina Island this weekend. Here Whoa. in Vegas, for my very first collaboration video with one of my heroes, uh, my YouTube heroes. Okay, so how? Happy am I. Well, check out his channel because he really does get around uh, vampires in New Orleans, witches in Salem. I mean, if you're into the paranormal, which I know many of you are. Yeah, because they're cool. Well, and uh, exactly. And I won't really <laughs> indulge that stuff because I'm, well, I'm a skeptic. If you're into that, watch his channel. Yeah, but that's also, so I actually suggested, I'm like, have you heard of Jack Baggins? Do you know at this museum? She's like, I live right down the street. I'm like, ah! So I said, how about we go? Because they don't allow filming inside the museum. No. Okay. Understandably. So, so what a lot of YouTubers do is they take the tour and they talk about it afterwards, and which is what we just did. And uh, I went over on my video, uh, what I experienced. Now, um, that's going to be like the part two of what we're doing here. Well, part one, part two. If you want to see the whole conversation we had about what we thought of the museum, check out his channel because we did a video mm -hmm. and he'll be uploading that there. And one thing I'm going to add to my channel that other videos uh, made by people who took the tour haven't done is um, I'm a believer in this stuff, in the old world ways of protecting yourself. And so I will go over in my video the steps I took to protect myself from the negative energies, spirits, whatever you want to call them. And he's not kidding. He, he took precautions. Yeah, watch his video for all the information. So I will, in my video, I'm going to tell my experience in the museum and then the steps I took prior to going to the museum to protect myself. And I actually felt them working. All right, well, check out his video and watch the rest of mine to see what I thought. To find out what I thought about the Zach Baggins Haunted Museum, head on over to Eric's channel and check out our collaboration video. Just click the link here in the upper right hand corner, and I'll also include the link in the description below. But meanwhile, back in my world... Okay, that Zach Baggins Museum was fun, but it's really more of a tourist attraction than a real creepy haunted place. Now again, I'm no believer in the paranormal, but if I was, I think I would be much more interested in another allegedly haunted Vegas landmark. Bally's Hotel Casino. This hotel seems way creepier and much more likely to be haunted because of its gruesome history. Long before it was known as Bally's, this was actually the original MGM Grand Hotel. 
The current MGM Grand, the big green building with the arena and the super douchey nightclub and the giant lion out front, was built in 1993. But before that, there was another MGM Grand Hotel in Vegas, right here where Bally's stands today. The first MGM Grand Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas opened in 1973, and it was a really big deal at the time, setting a new standard of luxury for Las Vegas. In fact, it was the biggest hotel in the entire world. Dean Martin played there on opening night, and all the top superstars of the day performed there over the years. I guess it was like the place to be back in the 70s. But it was also the scene of an unspeakable tragedy. A little after 7 a.m. on November 21st, 1980, an electrical fire broke out in the hotel deli and quickly spread throughout the hotel. Because it was so early in the morning, many of the guests were still sleeping. You know how it is in Vegas, you stay out late and then end up sleeping until noon? Well, because of that, a lot of guests were trapped in their rooms by smoke and flames, and a total of 85 people ended up dying. 78 guests and 7 employees. It was almost like what happened on 9-11. People were trapped on the upper stories of the hotel tower and couldn't get down because of the smoke and flames. About a thousand people ended up being rescued from the roof of the building by helicopters from Nellis Air Force Base, and some guests even tried tying bed sheets together to climb out the windows and lower themselves down to the street. Most of the 85 victims died of smoke inhalation or carbon monoxide poisoning. They were trapped in the hallways or even in the stairwells, and they even found, I think, 10 people dead in an elevator. Can you imagine anything more terrifying than being trapped in an elevator in a burning building? I mean, I was stuck in an elevator at Caesars Palace once for 45 minutes, and that was bad enough. I can't imagine any worse way to die. Those poor people. The fire raced through the casino itself, and a huge fireball blew out the front entrance. But interestingly, the hotel tower itself never caught fire because it had a sprinkler system installed. In fact, only three or four people actually died as a direct result of being burned. It was the smoke and carbon monoxide that killed most of the victims. Anyway, it was one of the worst hotel fire disasters in history. But because the hotel tower itself never caught fire, they were basically able to just sort of clean things up, slap on a new coat of paint, and reopen the joint about eight months later. And in 1986, it was sold and renamed Bally's. And by then, most people didn't even remember what had happened there. But I always thought it was pretty creepy. I used to work for this company that did souvenir photos at all the different showrooms and restaurants around town. And every now and then they would send me to work at Bally's. And the photo lab was up this long, creepy staircase in the back that was, looked really old. In fact, it had probably been there since the MGM fire days. And again, I've never been much of a believer in the paranormal, but I always got a really creepy vibe going up there. I think this tower here was the original MGM Grand Tower where all the people were trapped inside and had to be rescued from the roof. It's hard to tell, but I looked at some old pictures of the MGM and compared them to the current hotel towers. And I'm pretty sure this is it. I mean, it blows my mind that they were able to just clean it up and redecorate it, put in improved safety features, and then continue renting out the rooms like nothing happened. I mean, it makes sense. Remember, the hotel tower itself wasn't damaged by the fire, so why tear down a perfectly good building just because 85 people died there? But at the same time, it just seems kind of freaky to be celebrating a birthday or an anniversary or bachelorette party or whatever in a place with that kind of history. Moreover, many guests do report hearing unexplained sounds of crying and coughing in the hotel hallways, and some even report seeing ghostly apparitions in the casino itself where the fire started. Supposedly they see ghosts of people gambling, just like they were doing before they died. That's pretty creepy. Anyway, I thought it might be kind of interesting to go up that same creepy staircase I used to use when I was a photographer and wander around the back hallways at Bally's and see if we see anything unusual.
think this was the photo lab. Wow. Could be original. Who knows? that go up into the tower that I think was the same tower where the fire was. Oh my god, how messed up is this? It's a virtual reality experience where you pay to put on these goggles and it makes you feel like you're standing on a plank towering above a city. Almost like you were trying to escape a high-rise fire. I hate to even ask how much they charge for that experience. Whoa, I don't know about ghosts, but that was creepy. Still, even though 85 people died in this hotel, realistically, people die in these hotels all the time. They just don't report on it because it messes with tourism and the feel-good vibe of Vegas. You know, what happens here stays here. But unfortunately, there's a lot of suicides in these hotels. People jump off the stratosphere tower all the time or off of those balconies inside the atrium at the Luxor Pyramid. And sometimes they just end their lives in their hotel rooms. And they can't tear down a hotel room every time someone dies in it. I do think they closed off the room where the Mandalay Bay shooter stayed. You know, the guy who fired on all those people at the concert across the street a couple years ago, killing 58 of them. Well, I'm pretty sure you can't rent that room anymore. Although, I'm sure there's a lot of macabre thrill seekers who would like to. But for the most part, the MO here in Vegas is the show must go on. I mean, I remember back uh, on 9-11, that very night, all the bars and nightclubs were chugging along, doing business as usual. I mean, it was really weird, but what are you gonna do? I guess that's what Vegas does best, help distract people from the misery and sadness of day-to-day -day life. Sure, it's a fantasy, but I guess it can be kind of therapeutic for some people. But that doesn't mean we can't remember and honor those who lost their lives, whether it was in the Mandalay Bay shooting or by suicide, or here at the old MGM hotel fire. 